latest from your vantage point because uh, your stepfather, for example, um, President Babo, reports suggested that uh, he's somewhere in the Concorde, possibly in the presidential mansion, in a bunker. Is that where he is? Well, he's at his residence in Kokodi. I don't know about the bunker thing, but I know he's at the residence. Really? Yeah. Have you talk, spoken to him? or Not to, to him, but to my sisters. You spoke to your sisters? Yes. They are together? Yes. What my brother is there, my sisters. They're fine. It's a lot of um, bombarding, but they're okay. Doing good. Are they very confident that uh, they will come out of this thing uh, in one piece? Um, yes, we are. Yes, we are. There are a lot of people who are wondering what is President Babu looking for? Because frankly, the international community, especially the United Nations, the French and everybody, whatever they are saying, it's already over. It's a lost cause. I'll what is Babu's end game? I'll tell these people it's not over until God says it's over. Until That's the one. fat lady sings? Until God says it's over. That's number one. And number two, he is looking for this truth. He's standing for the truth. And he said himself, I'm standing, standing for the truth, the election results. Up to this day, he's been asking for the international community and for all the people who want to see the truth to come and recount the ballot. Did anyone come to recount? No. They came, they talked, they met people, and they repeated the same decisions that they had taken, you know, back in November, December. They haven't counted yet. Because they know if they count, then they will find that he is right. There are some voices from uh, Africa, uh, especially South African President Jacobo Zuma, Ugandan President uh, Yoweri Museveni, and a few others, who had actually bought into that point of view. Mm -hmm. What happened? Even here, I should note that there is a senator in Hofe, mm -hmm. who has even written letters to mm -hmm. the Secretary of State. Yes talking about exactly what you are talking about. Yes. In fact, even calling for another election. Election, yes. Yes, I'm aware of that. So what happened? It looks like uh, nobody has been listening there. Well, nobody has been listening because people don't like the truth in general. What is the truth? The truth is that Babo won the election, that there was voter fraud, there was violences, there were uh, all kinds of abuses in the north and in some other regions of Cote d'Ivoire, and that the Constitutional Council recognized those abuses and decided to um, void some of the votes, and they declared Mr. Gbagbo president, but people don't want to listen to that. Now, talking about the Constitutional Council, it has the mandate, mm -hmm. essentially to have the last word on election results in your country. Is that correct? Yes. But what about the issue of the chairman of the Constitutional Council, mm -hmm. who is linked to your stepfather Why is as it an being issue? An ally. Why is it an issue? Here in the United States in the Supreme Court, do people appoint people who are not close to them or who are not um, of the same uh, view with them? Do they just pick someone by chance like that? You may in have... France. Mm -hmm. In France. Because we basically copied the French Constitution. Mm -hmm. And the president there also appoints members and the president of the Constitutional Council. Is there a problem there? Why is there a problem in Cote d'Ivoire? So what do you think is the problem, if it is well, not the, the truth, the problem which is you call the, the truth? The problem is that the people want Ouattara in power because Ouattara is more flexible. Who are those people? Um, France, uh, the US, uh, the UN. W what is it that uh, Babo couldn't do for those people or those interests I wonder that you think Arasan Ouattara is willing do. to do? I wonder. Why they didn't come and say we want to be partners? Because this is what this is about today. No, but Africa, no, let, let me tell you. Is that Africa you is looking. Well, that's what they say. Africa is looking for partners. Cote d'Ivoire is looking for partners. Cote d'Ivoire doesn't need countries to come and tell them how to run the country, how to run the economy, and how to use their resources. We want partners, okay? But people like Ouattara are willing to keep the same old mentality whereby we're supposed to be independent, but we have to take our orders from uh, countries like France, for example. But we, we, it's, it's not that anymore. We've been to school. Africa has great intellectuals, great experts. We have a vision for our nations. We have a vision for our continent. And we want friends. We want partners. We don't want masters. 
So you believe that uh, the intellectual balance of power has been shifting from the traditional, for example, um, you know, uh, sources of uh, the daughters and uh, the sons of uh, the traditional masters, uh, perhaps to the daughters and the sons of uh, the traditional servants? It's, it's, it's not a matter of um, daughter of traditional masters of, or, or, or daughters and sons of, of uh, new uh, uh, servants. It's only an issue of Africa wanting to be in charge of Africa, period. With decent relationship with other nations in the world. Mm -hmm. Africa wanted to be developed so mm -hmm. that we don't have to go to Europe or come to America to have a better life. That's all it is. Obviously, your stepfather is a very intelligent man. He was a professor of history. Thank he you. went to the Sabon, University of Paris, of all places. And uh, obviously, if you look at the historical, uh, if you look at the historical, uh, I think, uh, uh, philosophical and I think uh, colonial um, you know history of France and what have you he should have turned up into a black Frenchman <laughs> what happened what happened is that the vision inside of him is true okay he has a vision and a love for Africa that no trial will take out so when he goes to learn he doesn't go to change his mentality. He goes to learn. Because what you learn will help you have a broader mindset, will help you make better decisions. So he did go and he did learn, but he never lost his soul. He never lost his vision. He never lost his heart, okay? If you go someplace to acquire something and you get lost, you, you, lose, you lose your way, then you, you lose your own self. But he's always been true to himself, to the vision that is in his heart for Africa, the love that he has in his heart for Cote d'Ivoire. So that's what it is. So he learns, but what he learns that it changed him. He's been in power for 10, ten years. Is there something you can put your fingers on and say, you know what, this is the single most important accomplishment that President Babo was able to put on the table? Okay. Uh, I'll say one thing before I answer your question. He may have been in power 10 years, but he wasn't really um, um, being the president for 10 years. Because he was elected in October 2000, mm -hmm. and then unfortunately, less than two years after, there was a coup. And after the coup, there was uh, the Marcusi Agreement, among other agreements. Mm -hmm. And at that um, Marcusi Agreement, it was decided that uh, we should have a prime minister with all powers, that all the political parties of Cote d'Ivoire would have a representation in the government. Mm -hmm. So really, he never really had a chance to implement the programs, the vision, the dreams that he had for his country. All the years between 2002, or really 2003 from the Marcusi Agreement, till now has been about seeking peace, has been about uh, uh, implementing Marcusi Agreement, which by the way, was about uh, land ownership, uh, um, elections, things that had nothing to do with the attack that Cote d'Ivoire had gone through. So he has not had a chance to really do what he came into power for. 